We gather together, we continue our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather in faith, we open our hearts and trust to God's gift and promise of forgiving love as we confess our sin and brokenness. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you speak God's word of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you speak God's word of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you speak God's word of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to a richer and more abundant life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory to God in the highest Amen. and on earth peace to people of great will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heaven King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Friend of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on the solemnity of the apostles, Peter and Paul, Give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those to whom she received the beginnings of our faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. of the apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James and the brother of John killed by the sword. And when he saw that this pleased to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the feast of unheaven bread. He had him taken into custody and put into prison. Under the guard of the four squads of four soldiers each, he intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being held in prison, but praying to the church was never being made to God on his behalf. On every night before Herod was to bring him to, to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the guard door, guards kept watching the prison. 
Suddenly, angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light of the stone in his cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from her wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. So he did. Then he said to him, Put on your coat and follow me. So he followed him out. Not realizing what's happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. The word of the Lord. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glory, glorify the Lord with me. And let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord the just judge will award me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. 
Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. celebrate the feast of the two great apostles, Peter and Paul. And they're really distinctly <clears throat> different, especially, especially when it comes to suffering. Paul, I would have to say, seemed to be a little more adaptable to suffering than Peter. But his experience was different. Paul did not come to know the Lord until after the resurrection and the ascension, when he had his experience on the road to Damascus and received this revelation from Jesus. And when Ananias is told to go and pray over Paul, Jesus tells him specifically I will teach him how much he must suffer for my name. So Paul's ministry from Jesus was rooted in the fact that he would suffer. Not just once in a while, but again and again. And when he is prayed with, he's baptized and we're told specifically he received the Holy Spirit. And if you read, especially 2 Corinthians, Paul on three different occasions narrates the sufferings he went through. And that's why I say it wasn't just an occasional moment that touched his life. He suffered many, 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 many times. And he had the power of the Spirit to help him with fortitude and understanding. Now Peter is quite different. Peter, as we know, is among the first of the disciples. And in Peter's journey, especially before Pentecost, he, he does two things. He lays claim to more than he's willing to receive. And when it comes to suffering, he'll be the first to run. He'll be the first to run. For example, in today's gospel, we have this high point where he professes, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him specifically, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, because this has been made known to you by my Father in heaven. Now, had we continued that gospel, Jesus immediately after this would have said to Peter and the other disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem, and there I will suffer grievously, be rejected, killed, and raised up on the third day. And Peter's response is to say, God forbid this happen to you. And Jesus has to say to Peter, yes, behind me, you say. Peter lays claim to more than he's willing to receive. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, the bread of life discourse. 
when everyone else is leaving, Jesus says, what about you? Are you going to go away too? And it's Peter who says, Lord, we have come to believe that you are the source of eternal life. To whom shall we go? That's a bold claim. And yet, in the high priest's courtyard, Peter will deny the source of life three times because he is afraid to suffer. And on the night of the resurrection, he, along with the other disciples, are gathered behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. Peter would be the first to say, when it comes to suffering, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And then Pentecost happened. Then Pentecost happened. The Holy Spirit that anointed Paul so mightily anointed Peter and the other disciples. And when you go through the Acts of the Apostles, they have a complete, completely different journey. Suffering no longer scares them. Suffering and persecution is not to be avoided at all costs. They accept whippings and scourging and being insulted. And we're told time and time again, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy of suffering for the sake of the name. And the only difference is the spirit. The only difference is the spirit. Somehow, the spirit was able to penetrate Peter's mind and heart and that of the other disciples and help them to see, as Paul understood so well, suffering can be part of the journey. Persecution, pain, and evil can be part of the journey. And they don't have to be avoided at all costs. Now my takeaway from that is, when life starts spiraling out of my control, maybe the first person I need to call on, surprisingly, isn't Jesus, but the Spirit. The Spirit. Maybe that's my great mistake that I don't ask the spirits light, guidance, and fortitude enough. Paul did. Peter did. The other disciples did. And what a difference it made. We stand together now to profess our faith, to share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of the Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we continue now to trust in God's great care. We place our prayers into God's keeping. We pray on this feast of the Apostles Peter and Paul for all who guide us in church leadership, especially our Holy Father and Lord, that they will be attentive to the guidance of the Spirit. We pray. Let us continue to pray for all of our parish communities that we might find in them the gift of the guidance of the Spirit and the wonder of the life of Jesus in the Eucharist and the power found in the community of love, we pray. Amen. Let us pray for all of those who die, that their hearts will be open to the wonder of God saving, redeeming love, we pray. Amen. Let us pray for those who bring hurt or harm to others, that they might be converted to the journey of peace and love, we pray. And let us continue to pray for all of those who suffer in body or spirit, that they will know compassionate care, comfort, support, healing, and love. We pray. We've been asked to pray and remember this morning. I mean, Mataya, in gratitude for God's promise of life and his fullness, spoken to him. We pray. Lord, Lord, for the intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray. Lord, Lord, our gracious and redeeming God, as we gather on this feast of your apostles, Peter and Paul, lead us like them to be ever more open to the life of guidance the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit, that we too might journey ever more faithful in all that life brings. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Join me now in prayer, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice might be acceptable to our gracious and loving God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O loving God, accompany the sacrificial gift which we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you 
in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our joy and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Gracious God, most holy, almighty, and eternal God. For by your providence you blessed apostles Peter and Paul and bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith, Paul its outstanding preacher. Peter who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you called. And so each in a different way, gathered together one family of Christ Jesus, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O loving God, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, while he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, our loving God, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, loving God, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerald, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with her spouse, with the blessed apostles, especially Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, loving God, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your Apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not at our sins but to the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share with one another a sign of the Lord's love and peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand together in prayer. Grant us, O loving God, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be of one heart and one soul and made steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may the blessing of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit Amen. come upon us all and abide forever. Amen. Let us continue our journey in the peace and love of Christ Jesus. Uh...